What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Progress Not Perfection, the podcast where I teach you how to lose weight sustainably so that you don't ever need to do a fucking juice cleanse, a detox, or drink some sort of tea that makes you shit your brains out. Uh, we're going to debunk a lot of common myths on this podcast, so if you're a fan of that kind of stuff, then make sure to drop me a follow wherever you're watching or listening to this. Shout out to um, my people who have been watching us over on YouTube. I am dropping these episodes weekly on YouTube. So if you prefer these in video format, they will be available over there. And then if you are interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching, I will also leave a link. You can apply for one-on-one -on -one coaching. Spots are limited. I can't guarantee that anybody's going to get in. But if you leave an application in there, I'll usually get back with an email in a few days. All right, let's get into it. So I had a client message me this last week. And she said, Jeff, I've lost all this weight. I've done incredibly well. I'm, I'm super stoked on my pro progress. I don't want to sound ungrateful here, but how do I make sure that I don't gain the weight back like I have every other time? Like She was scared. She was worried that she was going to gain all this weight back. And fair enough, right? That's pretty common. People lose weight. They gain it back. They know how to lose the weight in a quick, usually unsustainable, crazy fucking crash diety kind of way. And then what happens when they don't have the accountability or they don't have the discipline or they don't have the motivation or they don't have whatever, they fucking gain it back, right? So how do we break that yo-yo cycle? How do we get out of that routine? I'm going to talk about it in this episode. I'm going to talk about some things that have worked for me. And I'm going to tell you exactly what I told this client first. So number one, I said, well, good thing you found the right fucking coach, <laughs> okay? Now, I don't say that to brag and boast. I say that because I have helped so many of my clients who struggle with, hey, they used to gain this weight back, but this time we did it more sustainably. We taught them the habits. We focused on the habits, not the outcomes. So that's the first tip I would say. Focus on the habits, not the outcomes. So when you focus on the drinking the water, getting more fiber in, making sure that every meal has a large portion of protein in it. When you focus on these basic habits, when you focus on weighing yourself on a scale consistently without letting the scale ruin your fucking day, guess what? You're going to get really good at weighing yourself without letting the scale ruin your fucking day. When you look at measurements objectively, not subjectively, and you don't get emotional about them, but you look at them as a scientist, Throw on your scientist goggles real quick. Become a fucking scientist and learn about the fluctuations of weight and why it happens. Had a salty meal yesterday, the weight's going to go up. You're on your period, the weight's going to go up. You haven't shit in three days, the weight's going to go up. There are lots of reasons why the scale would go up, right? Or maybe you had a tough leg workout yesterday. I know I did. The scale's going to be up two, three pounds every single time I'd hit legs. So these are the kind of things that you start to pay attention to. You look for the patterns. You look for what's happening in real time, and then you're able to adjust your emotions and look at the habits and not the outcomes. Now, outcomes are important, right? Like we do want results, but this person already told me they, they got the results. Now they want to maintain the results. So next we're going to talk about maintenance is momentum. The holiday months are coming up. This is a time of year that people notoriously gain 10 to 15 pounds, maybe even more, okay? There's a lot of stress, a lot of pressure, a lot of financial things come up during the holidays, a lot of things come up during the holidays, okay? And not to mention there's a lot of social pressure for you to eat heavy, calorie-dense foods during the holidays. This means that you're going to be around a lot of pasta, a lot of pizza, a lot of cake, a lot of Thanksgiving foods, a lot of Christmas foods, a lot of travel, a lot of stress, a lot of family, a lot of fucking uh, mother-in-laws, a, a lot of family. So you're going to deal with a lot of pressure, a lot of stress, a lot of kids, a lot of, a lot of different, you're going to be pulled in all kinds of different directions, right? So you have to learn how to handle that stuff without turning to food as a coping mechanism. And so the holidays are stressful right? So what am I getting at here? I'm getting at the fact that a lot of you are going to maintain for the months of October, November, December, okay? And that is better than you gaining. Maintaining is better than gaining. And so maintaining is a win. If you looked at your data from last year, 
I guarantee you that you probably gained weight during those months, or maybe you gained weight during the summertime. So if you can maintain during the summertime or you can maintain during the holiday season, that's a win. And then January comes, you're going to be fired up to lose a couple more pounds. Cool. You know, a lot of people have problems with New Year's resolutions. I don't have fucking problems with them. I think that's where a lot of people, a lot of my best clients come from New Year's resolutions. A lot of my best clients come from not wanting to gain weight during the holidays. So they hire me right before the holidays and they actually make great progress. And then we roll into January and they're fired up and they want some sort of challenge. So I would say that... uh, Go with the flow. If life is super stressful and crazy right now, maybe now is not the right time to jump into a calorie deficit. Maybe you work on maintenance. Maybe you bump calories up a little bit. Work with what life is giving you. Life on life's terms is always going to happen. I had another client whose mom just passed away. I messaged her and I said, hey, I didn't get a check-in this week. What's going on? She said, hey, my mom passed away. I'll fill out my stuff when I get a second. I said, don't fucking worry about it. Your mom just passed away. I don't need your check-in sheet filled out. Like, take this time to be present with your family who needs you, right? So there are times in life where we can really focus on this stuff, and it's okay if you are in a time in your life where maybe it's not the main focus, but it doesn't mean you don't have to do nothing. It means that you do something is always better than doing nothing, okay? Something is always better than doing nothing. So maintenance is momentum. Something is always better than nothing. And remember that there are seasons for you to go a little bit harder and there are seasons for you to pull back a bit and you have to know which one is right for you. I would say October through December is usually times where it's generally time to pull back a little bit if you're a parent, if you have a lot of things going on in your life. But guess what? If you're the kind of person who always has a lot of things going on in your life, which that's probably you because that's all of us, then guess what? You need to learn how to deal with life and the punches that it's throwing at you and duck and weave, baby. Jab, 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 right hook, okay? So there's a lot of things that can be happening in your life, but you it doesn't mean fat loss can't still be a priority. It doesn't mean it can't still be a goal for you. You just may need to get creative with how you do it, which is why coaching can help a ton. I don't just give my clients calories and protein and tell them do it or I'll fire you. I give them the structure and routine of simplifying everything and then I basically check in with them weekly to make sure that they're doing okay with the other side of things, which is the mental side of things. A lot of you guys are not struggling with the physical side of things. You're struggling with the mental side of things. You guys could be getting 10,000 steps a day, no problem. You could be doing your workouts, no problem. But when it comes to the mental side of things, it's where a lot of you guys struggle. It's where a lot of you guys have a hard time seeing your own wins and victories and you don't give yourself enough credit and you don't give yourself enough compassion and then you give up or you spiral out of control with some sort of like, you know, sabotage type behaviors that's going to not only make you feel like shit when you wake up on Monday and the scale's up five pounds again, but it's also going to be a lot harder to get back on track because you're constantly beating up yourself in your own head. So a coach can help. A coach like myself, I'm going to help you see where are the blind spots? Where do we need to work on? Where do we need to do better? And where are we already doing good enough? And you just need to be a little bit more patient and be easy on yourself. So that is my offer to you. Like I said, um, the link to apply for coaching is going to be in my bio. So you can go check that out if, if you're interested in something like that. Okay. Now we've talked about maintenance. We've talked about how it's more important than fat loss and most people struggle with maintaining the weight. We have a weight maintenance problem. We don't have a weight loss problem. The weight loss industry in the US is billions and billions and billions and billions of dollars every single year. Okay, so we don't struggle with that. We're actually a very weight loss obsessed country, but where we struggle is weight maintenance. Now, There are some things that are going to help you maintain that weight long term. Number one is going to be a daily activity level. When you look at countries like Japan, when you look at countries like Italy, when you look at countries like Spain who have notoriously low rates of obesity, they do one thing incredibly well and that is they are way better at walking than we are in the US. If your step count 
if you okay look look down at your step tracker right now what is it at is it at 4000 steps is it at 2000 steps is it at 1000 steps whatever it's at i want you to look at that and i want you to think about what is it going to be when i end the day Okay, now if you don't have a step tracker, I highly, highly, highly recommend you buy some sort of wearable because that is another form of accountability that's going to hold you accountable just to walking more. I can't tell you how many people come to me for coaching and they're walking like two, three thousand steps a day. I'm like, no wonder you can't eat any fucking food without gaining weight. You're barely moving. You're moving like less than a toddler. Okay, so you got to move. You got to get those steps up. I don't care how much, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, 10,000, 12,000, 15,000, whatever you can manage throughout the day, just get them up. Get them up higher than what you're currently doing. Do some cardio. Go get a bike, right? Go go to the gym. Get on the elliptical. I don't care. I don't care what you do. Just get more fucking activity. Get some movement in. Get a dog. Get a chihuahua. Get a fucking golden retriever, okay? Get out there and start moving. And I don't care if it's cold. I don't care if it's raining. I don't care if it's snowing. Just fucking start moving. I have clients who literally walk in their living room because they live in Nova Scotia. And it's like negative fucking 20 degrees. Cool. I wouldn't want to walk in that either. But you know what? If I had to, I'd take my dog out. I'd bundle the fuck up. I'd wear a a goose down jacket or whatever people do. And I'd make it happen. Um, You know. There's no excuses. There's no excuses. Everybody walks, okay? Get a walking pad. There's some on Amazon for like $140 right now. You guys can look at Amazon Prime deals. You can buy yourself a walking pad, okay? If you want it bad enough, the tools are there. I'm not here on this podcast to give you guys all the tools and tips and tricks. I'm here to help you guys see your own justifications, your own excuses, and help you guys get out of your own way so that you can finally make progress with your health and fitness, okay? So, if that's something you're interested in, stay tuned to this to, to this podcast. Is that that's where we're gonna go in that direction. I'm gonna get a lot more raw, a lot more real, a lot more honest. There's gonna be a lot more cussing on this podcast, and uh, yeah, I just feel like people need a fucking wake up call. And so that is what I am. I'm gonna do. Um, I may get heated up. I may get fired up. But if you're walking three thousand steps a day and you you're wondering why the scale isn't moving, come on, wake the fuck up. Or if you think that bread is making you fat, or if you think that donut having a donut is making you fat, it's like 150 calories. If you think that having a couple tablespoons of coffee creamer is making you fat, it's like 200 calories, okay? What's making you fat is not the things that you think it is. It's the things that you're not doing. It's usually not the things that you're doing. It's the things that you're not doing. So... We're going to talk a lot on this podcast about things that you are not doing and how to start incorporating them in a more sustainable routine for yourself so that you can finally see the results that you want to see. All right. That's it for this episode, guys. Um, That is how you keep the weight off long term. You guys just need to get your activity levels up. Realize maintenance is momentum. Realize that The same habits that are going to get you to weight loss are not the same ones that are going to get you to maintenance, okay? And realize, too, that taking maintenance breaks throughout periods of fat loss before you get to your final goal is beneficial. So if you have 100 pounds to lose and you lose 20 or 30, it's okay to take a maintenance break for a month and then go back to it. If you lose 40, 50, it's okay to take a break for a couple months, go back to it, you know, and, you know, I know that people don't like taking breaks because they just want to get it off now, but taking your time and being patient is what this whole game is about. It's a marathon, not a sprint, and that's how you get it done, all right? Please leave me a five-star review wherever you listen to podcasts or shoot this video a like, and I will see you guys next week.